Okay, so picking back up where we left off, um, David. Uh, so overall, like this is some really awesome work. Um, my my two cents on the whole thing is that um, even though this may be how it's actually built, this part still feels a little boxy. And so you, you sort of rounded off those edges and that's nice. Um, but it still feels like form-wise it could use something to make it just a little bit more interesting. Um, and it may just be you know, something as easy as like that, you know, like just giving it a little bit more of an interesting shape, uh, which that kind of starts making it look a little bit more um, like, a, like a 1940s truck instead of a semi. But to me, the the front part of the uh, where the engine sets, like the hood here, um, and this feel a little boxy, even though they got a lot of really neat elements to them. So I just I, Personally, I'd like to see them a little bit more elaborate in, in shape, even if it's just very small things like, um, like maybe these elements you know, slide back a little bit or so, something that just kind of changes up the shape just a little bit, you know. I, I don't know necessarily what it is. I would look in the reference to see if you could find something that just kind of makes it feel a little bit less like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is when we start off in modeling, and you got some nice stuff going on here with this angling back, you start off with usually some form of a um, a primitive, right? Like this, this probably started off as a box, right? This probably started off as a box, and you manipulated it to where it does until it doesn't look like a box anymore. And sometimes it's it's just nice to be able to change it up enough to where I don't see sort of the original source of that shape. Like this right here, one of the reasons that looks so good is because I assume you started with a box, but who knows what you started with there, you know. And some of them, you know, it's not as big of a deal. I obviously know that's com coming from a cylinder. This probably came from a cylinder. But this still feels a little bit like a box when we uh, when we turn the wireframe off. So, shading. Right. And so these er elements don't fi quite feel like... Uh, they've had as much attention paid to them as say the wheels have and the wheels just look amazing you know they, these look great um, so that's the uh, that would be my only thing is like just play a little bit with the form there and see if there's anything you can add to this that would make it a little bit more um, interesting and, and dynamic I'm also not 100 percent sure why you need all of these edges here um, not that I'm really, you know, and they don't really, I, I, I get it along, along these corners. I'm not really sure about here, though, uh, because they're not really adding a whole lot to the shape. Um, it's not necessarily a terrible thing that they're there, um, especially if you're just doing this for render, um, but it's a little inefficient. And, and so since you have all those edges, you maybe could just use those to add just a really slight, like, curve to the top of this shape or... Um, maybe just a little bit of a curve upward here or something. So, you know, just playing around with that and seeing what you can do to just make these a touch more elaborate. Now, my my suspicion is that these are boxy in the reference because it was probably hand constructed and and you know, it's, you know they're not going to fabricate like curved metal. It was probably just a you know some box shapes they built out of wood or something to make these shapes. Just play with it a little bit more to make it feel a little. Uh, more dynamic, because um, you got some great pieces in here that are kind of being overshadowed by the the simpler shape. Um, okay, let's go look. Overall, though, I, that was that was really good. Don't I don't want you thinking I was just sitting here like tearing it apart. It was really good, and just you know, we want to make sure that the that those parts don't start feeling too simple in comparison to some of the other elements you put a lot of time into. Okay. Greedy. Mm. Maya's thinking. There it goes. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go see what you got here. Is there a 
chance that this is a shader? What is this? Let me look here really quick. I'm not necessarily sure why these are coming across like this. I mean, it's fixable, but let's see if I can... It's very strange. Um, I wonder if this is a so it's letting me select the objects. Yeah, on a different render layer. No. So I'm not 100% sure why your models are showing up like this. Well, that'll fix it, but that doesn't explain it all. <laughs> it doesn't like it in the legacy renderer. Um, and that always is scary to see that. So, like, I think that everything's going to render fine. Yeah, it renders fine even in my software. Um, probably isn't going to render as well in my hardware, but uh, I say that, but apparently it does. So, I don't know, maybe it's just a viewport issue and mental ray loves it so I'm not really sure why it's doing that but either way I get it's <sighs> yeah so we're gonna go ahead and uh, check out the model because overall the models looking really good got that, but that's probably just a, uh, yeah, just go to normals, reverse, oh, are these instances? Ah, uh, that one's still connected, that one's connected there somehow. Ah, so, um, so what's going on here is because these are instances, um, they're all still connected. And unfortunately, instances are one of those things where you can't unconnect them. Um, so, so I'm just looking to see if anything else is still an instance. Um, yeah. So probably what I would do is I would take whatever was your original one. Um, Well, I, I don't believe deleting history will no, I think they're all still going to work the same way alright so what it's probably going to be is whichever one is uh, armrest 1 which was the original one with the uh, uh, the auto shape or whatever, you know, to delete all the rest of them. So it looks like it was probably this one, right? And then instead of duplicating them with an instance, you got to duplicate them um, individually. Because what's what's going on is if we look at each of these, 
the shapes are all armrest um, shape 01, right? So no matter which one we're clicking on, the same input is driving all of that. And we could probably do uh, something in the node editor to uh, deselect those. Let's see if I can. O2 shape is what's driving all of that. If I delete it, it's going to delete all of them. Can delete all those. It's going to delete all of them. It's figuring out how to break that connection, and, and really the easiest way is just to delete all of them except for one and just re reduplicate it. But anyway, that's why this one is turning black is because uh, you did the mirror across and it flipped the normals. Right. So if we look at our normals here, um, you'll see that they are all pointing outward. Right? And if we look at our normals on this one, well they... Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, maybe it's just because we... Ah, this is the scale that way that so you rotate it at 180 degrees and it scaled it this way. So I'm surprised that we're actually seeing the normals pointing outward though. But either way, the, the way to fix that is if it weren't an instance, you could reverse your normals um, by going to normals reverse. But the problem with it is, is since they're still connected, when I reverse this one, it reverses that one and actually all the others that are not reversed. So I can fix one, but it messes up the other three. And so the best way to do it is just get back to the original one and then reduplicate the other three, but just duplicate them not as an instance. And so do we have the same thing going on with the tires? We do. Um, so, yeah, the, the sometimes that's nice, but usually you're just going to want all these to be unique. And the problem with instancing is uh, is that that there's there's still some stuff in the input graph that um, is driving the overall shape, and it's one of the few things that deleting history doesn't get rid of. Um, so I I think that there's still a way of getting rid of it, but usually rather than go through that, I just reduplicate these wheels, and I mean you even have their location. It just has to be a non-instanced version of it. So. Um, as far as the model goes, there's not a lot that I I would change. I would maybe uh, maybe get something in there so people don't get their toes caught in it. Um, but overall, this is looking really good. Um, you even get this little thing under here. It's looking nice. Um, I feel like it needs yeah. It feels like it needs a little bit of something in here to for a, a floor panel. I think most of them have something like that. Um, but that's the only real feedback I have on it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Maybe play with that facet right there just a touch. But again, I'm I'm digging for stuff now. And if I hit three, that's not even an issue anymore. Um, so. Yeah, I don't I don't have a lot for you on this one. This is looking good. Uh, yeah, so keep working on it. Um, you know, if you I guess if you smooth this one, um, that rounds that off. It's like you're getting a little bit of something stretching there underneath that, but it's nothing major. So I'm guessing that's because. Yeah, you could probably just delete that little bitty face there and that'll get it. And I need a three. Yeah, get a little bit of a smoother. 
so very 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 nitpicky I'm just looking for something to give you as feedback really so this overall this is looking good um, I don't know what you based your reference on the if anything I would say it could use some form of detail right here on the wheel like it just feels like a, a hubcap and it may end up being that it is a hubcap and it just needs like a texture to it um, I know a lot of them you can actually see like the the the, the nuts and bolts that kind of hold the wheel on um, I like the little drive shaft thing you got going on here, um, and all of this is like if you decide to smooth it, it's actually smoothing very well. So, uh, so I like it. Um, good work. Um, I'd say work on that instance thing, and that's the only real thing I, I see. So, uh, close that. Don't save. Jessica, unfinished, it says. And that's okay. I kind of expected some people to have some slightly unfinished stuff. Okay. So, um, my... Oh, it, it is unfinished. Okay, I'm on. My Maya is frozen up for a second. So again, I like that you what you were doing here in this idea of you know it helps you understand it better by going you know into the the structure of it. Uh, I think that's working well, and I also like that you're kind of building it from the ground up. You got some nice pieces here that are, I think that are kind of interestingly accurate to the uh, to the construction of the uh, the model. Ho hold on one second. Okay, so I had, had a student coming by. Um, so I think this is, you get a lot of um, nice stuff going on, on the wheels here. I would consider maybe flattening them just a little bit, not not flattening them, but just by you know, doing a little bit of this. Ooh. I may have multiple wheels there. Let's see what's going on. Uh, yeah, I think you just have two, two wheels in the same location there. So just by sort of getting a little bit flatter there, you get a, a a feeling that it's not going to roll. Does that make sense? Um, and so you can play around with that just a little bit. Um, I think some of the shapes you're getting uh, for the seat are looking nice. This kind of has a, yeah, it's like a, like a little bit of a pinching going on right there and, and here. If we hit three... You're still getting a, a pretty good result though out of that, and that might actually be what you're wanting is for that little lip to be there. Um, I think that there's probably other ways to get that that may be more um, ideal when it comes to the topology. But as long as you're getting the form right now, I think that's my my biggest uh, concern. So. Really, I think you're, you know, you just need to finish it up. It's is, is the big thing. I think you're getting the the right shapes, and it seems for the most part that the mesh is pretty clean. Uh, you got a couple little areas here where you got this um, six-sided faces here with a three-sided polygon, and like you know, there's there's ways that you could probably work on this to just make that not even necessary. Um, so like. Uh, it would be. How do I even explain that? Um, yeah, ju I, I would just say play around with the topology. One of the easiest things to do is just be connect those, those two, right? We go to um, here and do this uh, target weld. Just drag that. And now we have a try and two quads, and so you're you, that's just going to smooth better now um, than it does over here on on this side where we get this these weird shapes and stuff pulling right um, it may not seem particularly different in the final smooth result but it will work better overall so you got a few little things like that I usually just hit three to test it um, for things like that to see if I'm, I'm seeing anything messing up uh, and even if I don't plan on having it smoothed um, but otherwise it's looking pretty good I think that you did a pretty good job of getting this to go around here. 
Um, you maybe could still smooth it out a little bit, but overall, I think it's uh, it's working pretty good. Um, again, the biggest the biggest note I would have is just finish it up, and uh, and I think that some of the little things will start to pop out to you. Like if I look here, we got kind of a harder edge, and maybe something weird going on there with the normals. If I hit three, though. It seems all right, so I don't think that those are really big issues, um, unless you're planning on leaving them unsmoothed. And so, you know, it's just little things like that. The thing I will say is, like, add these edges in, like, carefully. Like, you have it pretty dense here, but that just makes it hard if you plan on making, like, large sweeping changes to this shape here, you know, because now you have to edit so many points to get that shape to do what you want and you're going to inevitably grab the wrong thing and so it's just I, I always work from simpler shapes and go toward more complex shapes so you know just get the boxed shape in exactly the way you want and then add in just the edges you need and uh, and that will overall make your life a little easier because you won't have as much editing to do so Judy nice so this is a really nice way of getting uh, getting the uh, the reference you need for this. Let's see, how many minutes are we on here? I'm probably going to finish up this one and then uh, take a break and come back with a second video so it's not like super long. Yeah, overall this is looking pretty good. Start clicking on stuff. Come on, Maya. You're getting some neat forms in here. If you smooth it, you're getting a couple of issues. I think these are intentional. Um, the thing you'd probably consider is just not having this be part of the same mesh. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're going to get rounding on stuff like that if you do decide to smooth it. Um, but I would say if you don't decide to smooth it, it's feeling a little faceted right here. And so some of that may just be playing with the normals. Let's go to normals and softening our edges helps that a little bit, right? Um, but you don't want to soften all of your edges. Like these and these you probably want to, you know, keep hard. So that's why it's probably a good idea to have those as separate pieces. Um, or just go in here and you can manually select the edges you want to remain um, as hard edges. And uh, do your normals and say harden edges. And so that's there's a couple options for for all of that stuff, and it's you know it's just kind of playing around with it. Um, my uh, the thing that kind of sticks out to me is the steering wheel doesn't feel like it's really functional. Like that that wouldn't really like the pivot point for the steering wheel is right here where it would twist, but the pivot point for the actual wheel is a little too high up, and so it needs a little bit of work on making that wheel look functional. And this piece up here feels a little overly simplified. I, th I think we could probably get a little bit more information in that shape. It's not just a, a kind of a square on top. Um, even if it's just stuff like um, grabbing these vertices, turn on soft select, just get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of some fall off here. So I'm just doing a little bit of that. Um, or you could get even more extreme with it and turn your fall off up a little bit and you know, do some some stuff like that and that I mean like we can just we can do some very small things to it to just give it a little bit more appeal right um, and so that would be the thing I would I'd say to kind of focus in on that it also feels like you kind of get this ridge going down the back and that may be intentional um, but it may not be so if so, you, know, you may want to. If it's not, I guess the the easiest way to sort of fix that. Turn off soft select. Uh, this goes up to there. Um, sort of scale that out, and so it's going to start giving you options of keeping that ridge less rigid. 
here, hold down control to deselect those, and sort of nudge these out and just start working on that shape on the back there. Um, I noticed a few places where it at least looks like you got some topology issues, but I'm guessing well, the more I look at it, I don't really see that many. Um, I guess you got a couple here where um, you know, it's kind of hard to see in this when it's not smoothed, but you'll see that this face here is a five sided face. Um, and so that'll be somewhat easy to fix. And then you got some some weird ones here on the corner and maybe something weird going on in here. So you know, if you're not planning on smoothing it, it's not really that big of a deal, but if you are, those are some some issues I'd work on a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop on this video and uh, I'll pick up the rest of it on the next one. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.